Greetings everybody, I'm Daniel Cox from Natural Exposures and I've been earning my living as a professional wildlife and natural history photographer for well over 40 years. Uh, so in that time, and especially in the last 20 years since I've been shooting digital, I've found some programs that are a little different than what most people know about. We all know about Photoshop, we all know about Lightroom, and there are some other tools out there that I've been really happy with using in my workflow to get my digital images processed and out to the publishers and agencies and the people that that I work with. So by the time we're done with this, I'm hopeful that you'll have some other ideas on software workflow that you may not have thought about and seeing that there's some other options out there besides the ones that we are all aware of, such as Adobe's Photoshop and Adobe's Lightroom. So with that, let's get started. So the first piece of software that I use to keep track of all my pictures, and I do have a lot of pictures to keep track of. I've been shooting digital since the early 2000s, around 2003. And you'll notice over here in the upper right hand corner in my digital files, I have 1,359,663 pictures. So that's a lot of pictures to keep track of. And it's one of the main reasons I started looking for a new program when it came to my workflow and keeping track of my pictures. I used Lightroom for a number of years, but I had a very difficult time getting through pictures quickly with Lightroom. An example I'll show you. I'll double click on this folder. It opens up. I double click on the folder inside of it. And I'm now scrolling through these pictures where I couldn't do this with Lightroom. And it was that issue that really convinced me I needed to start looking for something to access this 1.3 million pictures. Now at the time I was working in this situation and having difficulties, I was about 500,000 images. And one of the things that Adobe suggested I do was to break up my catalogs into smaller groups such as wildlife, travel, landscapes, people, etc. And my thought at the time and still is today, these computers we buy are extremely powerful. There's no reason that these things should not be able to crunch the images and have an entire catalog under one roof, so to speak. There's just no way to predict what you're going to be searching for when you're searching for clients or blog posts or whatever. And so I just never liked the idea of having to break my catalog into different groups and not have them all accessible at one time. So getting through the pictures was really difficult at the time, but today when I'm using this program, which is Mylio, I wasn't able to do this. I wasn't able to go through these images quickly like this. It would hang up, I would get a spinning beach ball, and I would sit there waiting for things to happen as I'm trying to search for a submission of pictures for an editor that may have called or a blog post I'm doing, and it was just absolutely infuriating. So at the time, I didn't really know about this little program, but it didn't take me long to find out, and I have just been absolutely emphatically enthused about it ever since. One of the other really cool things about Mylio is that over here on the right-hand side, you'll notice this panel. These are all what they call clients, and these clients are just basically different devices that see Mylio. And I have this particular system I'm working on is my iMac here in the office. The next one is my MacBook Pro. That's actually at the house right now. It's at my home. Tanya's MacBook Air, and that's at the house as well. She's working with Mylio. Jill is our office manager. She is out uh, of the office and working from home still because of the pandemic. And all these things are devices that have Mylio on it with the exact same 1.3 million pictures. You'll see this is the Mylio Field SSD. And what that is, is it's a field drive that when I'm out shooting, I plug it into my laptop. Mylio sees it. When I import my pictures into Mylio, they go onto my laptop. And they also are automatically, without me doing anything else, once I plug that, that Mylio Field SSD in, all of the pictures start transferring over to the SSD. So I get I have two copies and one is on an external drive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna skip this one. Nine, ten, eleven devices. We're gonna skip that iPhone 12 since I've replaced that. But as you can see, there's a lot of devices here, and every single one of them hold my entire catalog. And I can search my iPhone just as fast as I can search this iMac here in my office that is a very high-end 
powerful Mac computer. So that's a couple of the really interesting and special things about Milio that I really like. Milio also works not only with the Mac system, the iMac, the Mac mini, the iPad, which is iOS, but it also works on Windows systems and Android. So I could actually have a Windows computer in my office or somewhere and have Milio on it have the exact same catalog. I could also have an Android device if I chose, a phone or tablet, and it would also show up here as a Milio client. So it's really pretty unique and pretty special. So that's that's a little bit about a couple of the main attributes of Milio that I really, really like. And let me, let's just go into a couple of things here and I'll show you what Milio can do. It's not a, an incredibly powerful program as far as editing capabilities, but that's okay because that's part of what this program is all about. I'll be showing you some pieces of software that I go outside of Milio to really do what I call my hardcore photography edits. And so as an example of what Milio can do, let's go over a few things on the editing side of Milio. You'll notice up here you've got info, map, edit, sync. Let's click on edit and we can adjust the exposure. And this is all works pretty well. The highlights and shadows, you know, one of the most difficult things for any program to really pick up and work with our blown highlights. Milio does a good job. It doesn't do as good as some of the other pieces of software that I'm working with and we're going to show you that. But it does do a decent job. I would say 80% of my edits come from Milio. So those are edits for Facebook and my blog, Instagram, that sort of thing. If I'm doing a great big beautiful print, I'm going to be showing you the software I go out to to do serious hardcore edits. But you've got your exposure slider here. It's very simple to use. You got contrast. Highlights. A lot of times I use the highlight tool to make sure any highlights are not blown out. Vibrance, saturation. I virtually never use these because I really like to rely on what reality is. And vibrance and saturation alter reality in my opinion. It looks good, but it's not real. Shadows. You can open up your shadows. You've got your whites, blacks, clarity. You've got your white balance here. So you'll notice we can change our white balance if we've shot it out. If we've shot it and we don't care for what it looks like. We've got a sharpening tool. Not a, you know, not a brilliant sharpening tool, but plenty good for the 80% of the images that I talk about with for my blog, for Facebook, etc. Probably its weakest link is right here in the noise reduction tool. Milio doesn't add any noise reduction to an image at all. And that can look problematic, especially when you're shooting micro four thirds cameras, which is what I do. All of the other programs, when you load them into, let's say Lightroom, DxO Photo Lab, Photo Mechanic, any of those programs add some noise reduction when you import those pictures or when you bring those pictures into them. Milio does absolutely nothing. I wish they would change that, but um, it's not a big deal because if they if we do run into problems, then we take it out. But it does have a light and a strong noise reduction tool, and it, and these work for 40% of my noise reduction issues. I will maybe use these, or if I have serious noise, I'll take it out to the other programs that we're going to be talking about. So you've also got the ability to do black and white, which is not real obvious in this picture because it's almost black and white on its own. And you've got little little spots up here in the histogram to show you your your areas that are clipping. So these are all the dark areas that are going to be too black to print anything from. And, it, and if you can use this to go down here and adjust your blacks so that you're not clipping those blacks. Same with the highlights. You can click on this and there are no clipped highlights which I figured was the case anyway, because we notice our histogram here is to the left of the right goalpost. We can shut that off, but these also work even if you're just dragging your cursor over it. So you can see that come up, okay. It's got a great crop tool, very much like Lightroom. You hit the R key, comes into crop mode. This is square, but let's go to the original crop and let's come in and tighten this if we decide we wanna do that goes vertical by dragging up. There's our new crop. And then we also have information that we can add to these pictures. This is the caption area. And here is the IPTC information as to who shot this picture. We've got keyword capabilities. You can do many images at one time. I'm gonna grab a series of these and take this caption out. First, I'm gonna copy it. And then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna put in test. 
and you'll see how quickly it renames all those images. So that's how quickly you can caption your photographs. Keywords, same thing. So now let's move on to the second most important piece of software that I use in my workflow called DxO Photo Lab. DxO is basically a raw conversion software program that converts the raw files. It processes them in a way that gives me all the details, all the dynamic range that you can possibly get out of your particular camera and lens. And in fact, DxO's claim to fame is that they take every camera, virtually every camera, and every lens for that camera, take it into the lab and calibrate software to determine issues with that lens and that camera. And then fix it when you bring it into the software itself, into DxO Photo Lab. So that's the main reason I use DxO. It's got tremendous capabilities in giving me the highest quality image that I can get from my raw files. And to do that, I simply click on an image in MyLeo, go up to Photo, Open With, come down here to Photolab 5 and bring up this image in Photolab. Photolab not only processes the image for the highest quality, but it has some tools that MyLeo doesn't have. And this is the program that I would use if I'm going to be sending pictures to a publisher that maybe have requested some photographs from me or if I'm making a big wall print. And so I'm just going to show you the basics. We're not going to go through all the details of Photolab because I'm going to go over the, some of the things that are most important processing for a publisher or creating a large fine art print. You'll notice up here in the right hand corner are tabs. You can adjust your exposure here. You can bring back your highlights. And this is where DxO really shines is that it has the ability to bring highlights back. My Leo just can't get. You can bring the shadows up. We don't have a lot of shadows in this picture, but notice his nose is coming up and we're seeing more detail in his nose. You've got your tone curves here. I'll typically for publication, I'll type in 250 and 10. That will set my tone curves. You've got a lot of other tools in here. You know, you've got your DxO Clearview, which is always way too much. Sometimes I'll use this, but only use it and then bring it way down. But in general, I don't use DxO Clearview Plus very often. You've got your color corrections, white balance here. And you can take it even to the next level with specific channels, etc. down here. I don't use this. I use the basics. And you have other options here. And one of the great tools that DxO has is this denoise technology. We don't really have any noise in these polar bear pictures. So let's go over to an image that I often refer to when wanting to showcase the noise reduction capabilities of DxO Photo Lab. This was an image shot on my Lumix GH5. I accidentally shot this at 12,800 ISO and it really came up with some strange colors. You'll notice the tremendous amount of noise in the sky and in the dark areas of this image. It's really, really horrible looking. So let's take it out to DxO. We're going to click on open with. We're going to go into DxO Photolab 5 and here we've got it in Photolab 5. DxO has three different noise reduction tools. They've got high quality over here on the right hand side if you look at my cursor this will give you an idea of what high quality is and it's showing you in the window what it looks like at hundred percent. Now Looking at it over here when you're in high, it'll actually give you an idea of what the noise reduction is going to look like overall. But when you go to prime or deep prime, and deep prime is what I use most often, it will only show you what it's going to do with noise reduction by this little tiny window right here. Because if it was going to show you the entire image, it would take so much computer power that you would not be able to work on this image very well. So they just do this one little chunk right here. So what I want to do is you'll notice that this little tower here on the top of the church is really a good fine lined detailed piece of the image that we can see with the sky behind it. So I'm going to click on this magnifier tool. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click on this and then we're going to go over here and look at what it's going to do with the deep prime noise reduction and it is amazing. There's still lots of detail in the metal structure going into the sky and the sky has been cleaned up completely. If we want to go down into the shadow areas, let's go down here into this area where we've got shadows. Look at how detailed this still is. The trees, the shadows of the roof, 
Let's go down here and take one of these areas. And so I can go up here and I can look. Look at the detail in this. It's absolutely incredible. So this is the power of DxO Deep Prime. And this is what I run my pictures through when I have got a really challenging image that has a tremendous amount of noise in it. Okay, so let's go back over to our polar bear pictures and let's go through some of the other tools that DxO has. I'm going to go to Photo, Open With, DxO Photo Lab, and it takes us over to DxO. The other thing that DxO has that Milio does not have is a cloning tool or a repair tool. I only use this for dust spots on the camera sensor. I don't take things out of my pictures. I don't add things to my pictures. Everything you see was actually there, but I do draw the line at allowing dust spots to live on my sensor. So the other tool that's really special in DxO Photo Lab is the local adjustments. So I click on local adjustments. I come down to the area I want to adjust. You'll notice that the, the little marker, the cursor's turned into kind of a bullseye mark. I'll bring it down here on the bear's face. I'm going to do two finger click or right click for a Windows machine. And I'm going to tell it to give me a control point. And we're going to work on the bear's nose. So I click on the bear's nose and it gives me a circle. Now the eyes are within this circle, so I don't want it to adjust the eyes. So I'm going to bring it down by clicking on the edge of the circle and then dragging it. Center it a little bit and then I'm going to drag this exposure down. And that's notice how it's taken all the details out of his nose. Or I bring it back up and it's brought details in. And you'll notice that it's not doing anything but just that nose area. If we would expand this out to the eyes, notice how the eyes just became lightened as well. Yet the whites on his face stayed just where they were, exactly where they were. But if we want to bring down the blacks, or in this color, it could be any color or any tone, we just place that marker on the area that we want adjusted, and that's all it will do. If you have similar tones to that one that you're marker is sitting on that fall within the circle, it will adjust those as well. So the last piece of software that I kind of keep in the wings is this program made by Skylum called Luminar AI. And it does have a really cool feature in it that can really help you quickly adjust an image. And so I'm going to go over to the Skylum software real quick. I'm working out of Milio again. And we're going to go over to Luminar AI. And there's the, there's the image. We're going to go up to Edit. And the one tool that really works well with this software is what is called Enhance. And this thing actually balances the brightest uh, skies with the foregrounds and does it really quickly. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of, a, of an AI adjustment. And look at that. That really did... I can get this same exact effect in DxO Photo Lab, but not with that one slider option. So that's about it. I hope this little presentation gives you some ideas on the possibilities of using other pieces of software in your workflow than the ones you typically know about. I know it's been a tremendous advantage for me. It's worked really, really well. Uh, very convenient, very fast, very efficient to have all of my pictures on all of my different devices. So with that, uh, we'll end there. But if you enjoyed this little program, please feel free to come over to our YouTube channel, Natural Exposures TV, where I do similar things on YouTube. So thanks for joining me. Stay safe, stay healthy, and continue your support for Nampa.